Today we are exploring the west side of the Tetons even further. If you remember, last time we showed you amazing waterfalls in the Swan Valley and Teton Valley. Today it's all about heading down the Teton Valley Scenic Byway and seeing the cute little towns along the way, the amazing scenery, Grand Targhee Resort, and of course, the Tetons. Kevin has loaded up the kids, and so we're gonna hit the road. Just getting my directions. We realized our windshield is filthy. So to give you the best possible view of the scenery, Kevin's gonna do some cleaning. We'll get out of here eventually. We drove through the beautiful Swan Valley, home to the South Fork of the Snake River and Palisades Reservoir, and into the town of Swan Valley. basically just getting started with the scenic drive. We are here in Swan Valley, in the town of Swan Valley, and this is where you make your left onto Idaho 31 and head over into Teton Valley. So as we were coming through town, we saw this cute little playground and said, let's let the kids get out and have some fun before we continue on because it's, you know, an hour's drive all the way over to Grand Targhee Resort and they were already getting a little restless. So come along with us for the rest of the drive. So if you're wondering where we are compared to Teton National Park, that is in Wyoming while we are in Idaho. So we are gonna be seeing the Tetons from the opposite side. So we'll be looking at the Tetons from the west, whereas the classic view in Teton National Park is looking at the Tetons from the east. This whole area is called Teton Valley, and it is known as the quieter side of the Tetons, less busy, just as scenic and idyllic. So if you're in Idaho and you want a quieter side of the Tetons, or you don't want to go over Teton Pass or go around on the other side, check it out from the west here in Idaho in Teton Valley. It's amazing. Victor is named for George Victor Sherwood, a postman who walked between Jackson Hole and the south end of Teton Valley to deliver mail. It's home to a historic train depot, City Park, which hosts weekly outdoor summer concerts, and is part of the Teton Pass Trail slash Greater Yellowstone Trail system. And there's even still a drive-in movie theater in town. So we just drove through Victor, and full disclosure, we stopped at the Victor Emporium again and had another milkshake, just like we did the other day. If you wanna hear about how good those milkshakes were, watch that video and we'll tell you all about it. And we were going to say, it's looking more and more like we're not gonna go up the chairlift because the black clouds were rolling in just as we got back in the truck, it started raining and then it came down quite heavily for a few minutes. But then I look over and I see Grand Teton majestically sticking out from behind the other mountains here with like full sunlight on it and just looking gorgeous and kind of saying, I'm here, <laughs> don't write me off just yet. So we're cautiously still heading toward Grand Targhee and we will see, we'll see what we see. We're gonna explore it either way and get on the lift if we can. Driggs has some of its origins in the fur trade in 1832. and was established as the first farming town in the valley in 1889. It's also home to the Teton Valley Museum, Teton Geo Center, and Teton Basin Ranger District. So now we are headed east of Driggs towards Grand Targhee. It looks like the Idaho-Wyoming border is coming up. We are about to cross into another state. Grand Targhee Resort is a ski resort that's right over the border in Wyoming. It's past a little town called Alta. In the summertime, they still run the lifts and you can go mountain biking down it. Or they also have just one that they call a scenic chairlift ride. And you can go check out what's up at the top of it. 
which is up over 10,000 feet. And there is a little summit trail up there that we'd like to check out, but we're still gonna see what the weather's doing. From here, it's looking a lot better right now. So as we're heading into the mountains to go to Grand Targhee, we see another sign that says there are some campgrounds back here. They call this Teton Canyon. And I'm awestruck because the view from right here, remember earlier we said, we don't know if we're even gonna see the Tetons. We don't know if we can go up to the resort and ride the chairlift. And now guys, we have bright, bright sun and the Tetons. How's that for a view? <laughs> this day is shaping up to be better and better and better. <laughs> Even better than we hoped for. This view is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Not regretting turning down here one bit. No, this is going to be incredibly scenic. We're going to get the kids out because the Teton River, I think it's the Teton River, some river, yeah. flows right here. And we're going to let them play in it a little bit. And then we're going to continue up. So we discovered that this is Teton Creek. It makes sense with the size of it, but it's perfect for the kids to put their feet in, splash around a little bit. We have seen several hikers and mountain bikers because there are a couple of trails that you can start from here. And we've seen several RVs go by as well. Can you beat this? No. <laughs> you cannot beat this. This is amazing. You get an amazing view like you do from Teton National Park, but there's hardly anybody here. We drove the rest of the way to the end of Teton Canyon, passing three campgrounds along the way. So Teton Canyon Campground is the last one down here, and it looks fantastic. But it was sold out, actually, in the camp house. They actually came up and talked to us, and he said that this is the first weekend of the year that it's been sold out, so... I don't think we would bring our rig. No, we would not. We are actually past that campground, so they have a sign that says no trailers past this point, but there are hiking trails here. So we have this beautiful river. And we have at least two trailheads for... There is the North Teton and South Teton trailhead that leaves from right at this parking lot. You just seem to be getting closer and closer to the Tetons from here, but right here, you don't have a view of them. But it sounds like you would if you go down that trail. Yeah. The kids are having fun in the river here, dipping sticks in the river, throwing rocks. We're gonna let them hang out for a little bit and then it's on to Grand Targhee. There's a great stop at the Teton Scenic Overlook on the way up to Grand Targhee Resort with a great view both into the valley and up to the Tetons. The Scenic Byway billboard says the three Tetons used to be a single massive mountain of granite and over time, freezing water broke off slabs of the rock and created the sharp ridges and pinnacles. So here we are at Grand Targhee Resort. We finally made it, but as you can probably tell, it is a different day. It was just too late in the day by the time we got done doing everything else and taking our time to see if those dark clouds would blow over so we could actually get a view up top. And by then the chairlift had actually already closed. So here we are trying again. It's so pretty. I can't wait to be up there. We see this lift going. That might be the one that we're getting on. The one we're going to take up is called the dream catcher. And We'll see if that's it. Either way, we are going to be up top here somewhere. We're going to have some fantastic views. Let's show you. So we made it to the parking lot. The chair lifts behind us. I think it goes up 2,000 feet and we still have to go buy tickets. So that is where we're headed next. Let's go. 
I've got to admit, I feel a little bit out of place just walking up here without a mountain bike. <laughs> we might be some of the only people actually going up the scenic ride without a mountain bike, but hey. So you can also hike to the top or bike to the top and then ride down. So the ride down is complimentary. If you want to ride up, you have to pay. Kids just love gondolas so much. I think they're gonna love this chairlift. This is the first time on a chairlift though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we're gonna see how they like it. But that's why we're gonna ride both ways. We don't really wanna hike <laughs> uphill <laughs> right now. So we're gonna ride it up do a little hike at the top and then ride it back down and half the fun today is the chairlift for us. Right? Alright, here we go. So we got the tickets. Two adult tickets were $36. The kids are actually still free so that is good. If they're six and up I think there is a little bit less of a charge for that but it's time to get on the chairlift. We up pretty high? Mm -hmm. This is pretty fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Nathan? Good. This is so good, isn't it? Is this your first chairlift? Mm -hmm. Here comes the mountain bikers. So I definitely call this a success. The kids love it. The views are amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, quiet, enjoyable ride up to the top. The weather is fantastic too. It's actually kind of nice with it partly overcast. It keeps it cool. The sign at the bottom said 80 at the bottom, 70 at the top. So not that huge of a temperature difference. And we do have an extra layer with us. So we'll probably put those on at some point, yeah. potentially. This rocks. Yeah, this is, this is a good way to spend a day. Up we go. All right, buddy. All right, right. Go ahead. All right. Scoot forward. There we go. All right, good job. We're gonna do the summit hiking trail now. Let's go. Blankets. So we're at the top of the Dreamcatcher lift now, the top of Fred's Mountain, and we just read that it's 9,862 feet right here. We've got the best viewpoint ever. Check out this view. definitely spectacular. You come around the corner here and you're at the summit with this amazing observation point and this view. in all their glory, the Tetons from the West. Grand Targhee is where you have to go to see these views. Amazing. It is views like this that make me miss living in Colorado sometimes, but thankfully, as a full-time RVer, we could go back there anytime we want. And we get this along the way. Now we're gonna hike back along this ridge to the chairlift. Enjoy the view with us. 
and then we'll head back down. And the hiking trail continues that way. So we just got word that there was a lightning strike within 20 miles of here. They shut the lift down when it gets within 10 and it is starting to come closer. So that means it is time for us to get out of here. We went from the lift to the Branding Iron restaurant with outside seating and great views. They give the kids these cute little etch sketches and they have the kids menu on the back. And Clara asked me to draw a unicorn. Now you tell me, is that a unicorn or is that a unicorn rhinoceros duck? It has started to rain, so it's really coming down, but thankfully we're under these umbrellas, so we're just gonna stay put and keep enjoying our meal. The rain started, the thunder showed up, but we still managed to get everything in. Right, they even shut down the lift, but it's been a great day for us. It's been wonderful being here. I mean, the west side of the Tetons are a must see. So we recommend that you check out this whole area as well. And we'll catch you on the next adventure. Bye. Bye. And don't just see the Tetons by car, foot, or chairlift. You can get on a bike or a boat as well. Subscribe and come back for our next episode where we show you how. Hello. So this might be a little bit weird, but it's the prettiest pit toilet I have ever seen. <laughs> Go that way around the roof. You Around the, wow, I can't talk. Oh, mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes are, and we put bugs for <laughs> It's trying to land on my face. Clara, show me what you have in your hands. Have you been smelling those? Mm -hmm.